City Council public hearing. Please come to order. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilors Kadeem. Joseph Kamara. Here. Stephen Kamara. Here. Kilby. Here. Long. Here. Pelletier. Here. Faveras. Here. And President Liberty LeBeau. Here. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Public hearings on the fiscal year 2020 tax factor. Are there any proponents that would like to speak? Any proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? You would please state your name and address for the record at the table. I'm Mike O'Sullivan. I'm the president of the Bristol County Chamber of Commerce at 200 Bacassett Street. Oh, that's Laura. Thank you. Yeah. Madam Pre President, I don't think the mics are on. Can we just, I just want to make sure that if they're speaking, that some, they can at least be heard at home. Button's going to be up like, like this. Hold on. Council Long's going in the back. Check oh, one, it's up. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Not plugged in. That's, that's part of the problem. Come to technical help. <laughs> Not working, Joe. Thank you. I want to 
us to start over? No, we're not. No, it's all set. Okay. Um, we're here to talk about the tax factor. We appreciate the opportunity. Um, there's a couple points that we'd like to make with. Uh, 200 Bocasa Street. No, it's your work address. Home address. Uh, 100 Almeida Terrace, Portsmouth. Motion to waive rules. So, so, so more. Second. Motion to waive the rules made by Councilor Kimble. Second by Councilor Long. All in favor? Aye. So voted. That's okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so there's a couple points that we'd like to make here. Um, first, Fall River already has the 20th highest commercial tax rate in Massachusetts at 3136. Um, an important factor to also consider is that since 2008, and this information comes from the, uh, the State Department of Revenue website, um, the, the commercial tax rate has increased 92% since 2008, which is a huge burden on business. Um, we also have the third highest, excuse me, the fourth highest uh, commercial, in I'm sorry, we had the f fourth high that's the fourth highest commercial increase at 92%. We also have the third highest, again, I made a mistake, the fourth, uh, fourth highest um, rate, no, I apologize, I gotta, can't read my own handwriting, we're the number three commercial residential ratio at 2.15 in um, in Bristol County. Seekonk is first at 2.2, Taunton is second at 2.1, and Fall River's third at 2.15. And what basically what that means is, uh, just to clarify, is that our commercial rate is, uh, is 2.15 above the residential rate, if you do the math. That's, that's the third in the county. Our concern is that we, when you, as you set the tax factor, we recognize you have to set the tax factor, but as you set the tax factor, our concern is that you make sure that you do it, um, that you take into consideration and look at the ability for, uh, to draw, attract business, and you also take care of business. And I don't mean take care of business in, in, in a negative sense. I mean just, just take into consideration the, the effect of the taxes on business. It is very, very expensive uh, to do business in Fall River with, these, with the taxes set the way they are. I just ask you to take that into consideration. And that being said, I'll turn it over to Carl. Thanks. Um, again, Carl Hetzler, owner of a residential property and a commercial building in the industrial park. Um, I've been here before and it's probably, uh, for some of you, it's, it's going to be the same old story. We're not, I'm not here to suggest that we should have a flat tax rate. That's not going to happen. Some communities do. I'm just here to ask that, as Mike has stated, that the commercial taxpayers in the city of Fall River get some consideration. Because as you heard from Mike, we are now the 20th highest commercial tax rate in the state, which includes Boston, Springfield, and other large cities. But we're the 205th from the top on residential. So what we have going on is our residential rate is well below average, and our commercial rate is almost near the top. And that's what the tax shift does, the tax factor. When you set it at the maximum of 1.75, we're not simply paying 1.75 times more. As Mike has pointed out, the residential rate actually goes down from the flat rate while we go up 1.75, so the ratio is 2.15. We're paying over two times more than the residential users. On top of that, you're all aware that we have a rainwater tax. And I know residents pay it too, but commercial users are getting hit very hard on the rainwater tax. That tax does not happen in many of the other communities that we're comparing ourselves to. They're not coastal communities like we are. So on top of our high tax for commercial users, we also have the rainwater tax. My building in the industrial park, which uh, between myself, I have 30 employees, 
and my tenant has 30 employees, so we have a parking area enough to hold, you know, cars for 60 employees, and, and it's a 62,000 square foot building. I pay $6,000 a year in rainwater tax, and I pay $60,000 a year in commercial taxes. So that's $66,000 a year, or roughly a dollar for every square foot. When I lease my property, and, and I'm gonna have a challenge on my hands because I've had a tenant for 10 years and, and they're gonna leave, the first thing when I set my lease rate is, the first dollar and change goes to the city of Fall River. So if, I, if I'm lucky enough to get four and change a square foot, 25% of that is going to cover taxes on that space and rainwater tax. And that's typical of other businesses in the community too. Now certainly some of the larger corporations you'll look at and say, well, you know, uh, so a company like Whirlpool might pay a couple hundred thousand dollars a year on that big building, but they're bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars. That may be true for Whirlpool, but there's a lot of small businesses like mine homegrown businesses like mine in the industrial park as well as throughout this city that you are putting a burden on those owners to pay their taxes, maintain their property, and be attractive. Right now we have one big building in the industrial park that came available, it's the old Light Lear building. And people call and ask, you know, what's the story with the Light Lear building? I said, well, it's up for sale, I don't know what the asking price is. but. If you don't think that potential buyers look at what the cost is of owning that property in Fall River, then you're kidding yourselves, because they do. And they look at comparative properties in other communities where the taxes aren't as high. And they say, well, if I'm gonna buy a 250,000 square foot building, let me buy it in a community where the tax rate is uh, much more affordable. So what we end up doing in Fall River is a cute little thing we call TIFFs. So new businesses that come in, they, they ask for a TIF. And the city council recognizes that for us to be competitive and get that business to come to Fall River, we have to give them a TIF. So what are we basically doing? We're lowering their tax rate so that we become attractive. But what about all the other businesses that have been here for 20 years or 25 years that aren't new, that aren't asking for TIFs, you're whacking us to the maximum amount of, that the state of Massachusetts will allow of potentially 1.75. And it's just unreasonable to keep going in that direction. And the last point I'm gonna make is very soon, the city of Fall River is gonna start taxing people for the construction of the new Durfee High School. The business community by and large supported that because we understand how important it is. Our question is, how is our portion of that burden going to be handled? Are we going to be flat with everybody else paying a rate that is equal to our property value? Or is that also going to have a factor attached to it of 1.75 or whatever you vote on tonight? So keep that in mind because there is going to be an additional burden. And it's, I understand it's residential too. but. The commercial owners in this community are getting hit hard and we are slowly becoming less and less competitive with the rest of the state. If we continue on the trend we're on, we're not going to be attractive at all for businesses to come to Fall River. And with that, I thank you for your time and ask you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman C4, Councilor Kilby. One, one quick question. Uh, as a leader of the business community through the chamber, does your board have a, a recommendation for us? in terms of what you'd like to see as a tax factor? Um, I don't put you on the spot, <laughs> but I'm sure. The minimum? <laughs> it'd be nice to hear. <laughs> In the conversations at our executive Not committee. No, no, we, we don't, no, we wanna be reasonable. Um, what our executive committee has said in the past is we, we would like to see a, a path to take it down to the minimum, maybe not, um, jump or straight to the minimum right off the bat, but if uh, if it was looked at over a course of a couple of years to try to get it down to the minimum, that would that would be a, a, a real accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you yield, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close the public hearing.
Motion Sorry. closed, made by Councilor Kilby, second by Councilor Long. All in favor? Aye. Right. So voted. Thank you. Motion adjourned. So moved. <laughs> made by Councilor Kilby, seconded by Councilor Kadeem. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. Special meeting of the City Council will now come to order. Madam Clerk. Councilors Kadim. Here. Joseph Kamara. Here. Stephen Kamara. Here. Kilby. Here. Long. Here. Pelletier. Here. Caveras. Here. Vice President Lalabi Lebeau. Here. Would everyone in the Council Chamber please rise for a moment of silent prayer? Please remain standing for a salute to the flag. Flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or a video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. We have a few people that have signed up for citizen input. Maria Stasio, 120 Willow Street. Subject is Whitefield Street. If you would both give your name and address for the records, please. Bill Texera, 1019 Montgomery Street. Maria Stasio, 120 Willow Street. Hi, we're here to talk about a lot that Marie actually owns. I'm gonna do a little talk for her if that's okay. She owns a lot on Whitefield Street that she purchased in July of 2004. Actually, she bought two lots at the time, 5,000 square foot lot and a 10,000 square foot lot. Um, she got permits or attempted to get permits on both lots. She was only able to get one on a 10,000 square foot lot. The 5,000 square foot lot was actually denied because it was wetlands or too wet to build on anyway, at the very least. Uh, for those familiar with Whitefield or not familiar with it, it's on a hill. She's towards the top of the hill. Um, I'm sure if you've been down there, you've seen that huge development. There's lots of houses going down that street. Uh, in approximately 2006, Jamie Duff purchased a lot of that property on Whitefield and on Frederick to build a development. Um, at the time the houses were built, um, there was a large pond behind the houses that were going to be built on Frederick Street. We actually have a picture of what it looked like an aerial view of this large body of water that was behind Frederick where the houses were to be built. Um, shortly after these houses were built, the people that were on Frederick Street experienced a lot of flooding in their basements and actually some of the houses were, were sinking. And to my knowledge, I know of one resident who actually sued the city and had their house repaired and jacked up and all kinds of other stuff. So in the process of trying to remediate that water problem, they installed two large pipes coming from the back of the houses on Frederick Street under the road of Whitefield to her property, which is on Whitefield Street. At the time she purchased the property, it was dry. She has permit to build on that property or build a single family home. Um, the city, we went to city and the city told them to, uh, you know, to put the pipes in to remediate the water across the street without Marie's knowledge, of course, at that time. Um, The city also decided to remove the Cape Cod berm, which is that kind of little curbing along a tarred road that allows the water to go into the front of her property. So the street runoff, the water from the street, is also dumping into the front of her property. Now keep in mind, this is a lot that she's owned since 2004 and had variances to build a house on. Approximately about a year and a half ago, we went to engineering upstairs and spoke to JR um, to talk to him about the problems with the water 
and these pipes that were installed. And after talking to him for a little while, we, we found out that the pipes were actually incorrectly put in. The pipes were supposed to help remediate any problems that she might have pertaining to the runoff of the storm water, you know, coming down the street. In essence, they're actually taking water from the back of the houses on Frederick and dumping them into her lot. When Jamie Duff built those, those lots, he also raised up all the adjacent lots, making her lot, which was once buildable, now the lowest point. So uh, Jamie said he was going to go after, uh, JR said he was going to go after Jamie Duff to try to correct the problem. According to JR, there was a $90,000 bond. That was, I guess, a lot um, to, to help with any repairs that might be needed once the development was finished. He also gave permission for Marie to fill her land, clear it out, because there's some trees there, and fill it so she could then start to, you know, plan on building her single family home. She then hired somebody who was going to, um, start clearing out the brush and fill, fill in the land. And in the meantime, JR went down and put like a cease and desist. You can't do anything here. You know, in fact, he actually opened up where these pipes came out into her land and made it bigger. So now the water is just rushing from across the street into her land. So it's basically useless land. And she's also been paying taxes on the land since 2004. You know, it's not like, you know, she's not paying taxes on the land with an with a opportunity to build in the future. Um, she then went and see JR again um, recently. This has been going on for over a year. We went to JR, JR's office probably three or four times. He was supposed to have a meeting with Jamie Duff, I think in June of this year. That never happened. We went back now, and then Marie went to talk to JR and said, hey, why can I not fill in my land? You said I could fill my land in to get it ready to build a single family home. Everybody else around me has built. Keep in mind, she owned the land before anybody else did there. He said that his hands were tied, that that land was being used to remediate a lot of water from other neighbors at this point, and that his hands were tied and that we'd have to try to find an another resolution, and that's why we're here today. Meanwhile, in 2016, one of the 5,000 square foot lots that was deemed not buildable has been now approved to build a single family home on, and the runoff water from that house is actually showed we actually have um, a plan that the runoff is actually also going into her land with approval from the city. So there's a lot, I think, that needs to be answered, and we don't, we don't have the answers. Can I stop you there? Mm -hmm. okay. President, uh, Councilor C4. That second, second 5,000 square foot lot, um, I thought Mrs. Sachio owned that. And it originally, and originally. she was denied the, the variance. Right. That's so right. you yeah. sold it to someone else? Uh, no, my ex-husband owns okay. that one. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. So, you know, with that being said, I think Marie might have a couple things to um, say also. Yeah. Um, last week, JR told me, look, you know, I understand the city did you wrong. Okay? We've been using your city, your land. 15 to, seconds. Uh, excuse me. He admitted that the city is using my land to dump everyone's water into my lot. Um, the gentleman on the side of me stated that he was told by the city he had to use my land to the Excuse city me. mandated i would that need a motion to waive the rules if so, we want to so moved. could i could i just interrupt for one second i, I apologize and then we uh, <clears throat> all in favor aye thank you okay thank you uh he stated to me that the city mandated that if he, he was to build they will allow him to build as long as he uses my land to run all his water into so he had stated to the city wait is this city property or is this private property? And they don't worry about it, do it. And I have here permit. I actually have copies of my variants I had where it shows my land was dry. My land is the highest point. It was the highest land, completely dried, and the city allowed me to build, gave me a variance to build. I also have the photo of the city where it shows across the street all the, land, the water from across the street and how my land is completely dried. They then came, take, put two pipes, ran it across the street from them, drained it into my land, and then the city told me, no, 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 that's not the case. We're, we put those pipes there to prevent any of their water to come into your land because we know what they're building on wetlands, so we don't want to destroy your land. So that's why we put the <coughs> pipes there. Unfortunately, it's now all wet, my land. 
He's just trying to get the attention of the president. Keep going. Okay. Unfortunately, um, it now my land, all this water comes from the two pipes draining a tremendous amount of water into my land, making everything wet. J.R. Swart promised me that the city's going to take care of this. He's going. They're <coughs> going to take uh, James Duff to court, make him fix the pipes. <coughs> Allow me to fill, clear my land and fill my land, and we'll, I will have my variance to build again. He now told me two weeks ago, absolutely not. The city's not going to take responsibility. No longer is going to take responsibility. This is your problem, not ours. Hire an attorney. Do what you need to, but we're not taking care of this anymore. I also have copies of the paper that states they permitted my neighbor to use my land. This is the per city permission for my neighbor to use my land to dump their water. Mrs. Sasho, could you make sure that the clerk uh, makes a copy of all those before you leave? Absolutely. Thank you. And I just want to give the council a point of information and then your next counselor. I've been out to this site um, with our engineer and our building inspector, uh, Eugene Borges and JR, uh, since July. This has been going on since before then, but this is the first time I'm hearing uh, about any of this part of it um, that wasn't brought up in the discussions at all, which is unfortunate. When you're driving down Whitefield Street, and if any of the councils have been down Whitefield Street or have a chance to go down, I've already spoke to uh, the acting mayor about meeting on this, and I've met with Corporation Council as well. All of the houses on the right-hand side, their backyards are completely flooded. They can't use them in the summer. There's mosquitoes. It's a mess. There's a 20-foot easement involved. It gets a little confusing. But, Mrs. Staccio, is your lot on the right-hand side or the left-hand side? M my lot, as you come down the hill, is on the right-hand side. Okay. It's the first and one. Yeah, I know which one. Yeah. first. And that's what JR stated. He says, you know, I would love to help you because what was done to your lot is, is wrong. <laughs> However, if I were to allow you to correct the mistakes that was done to your lot, I would now be hurting everyone else because they need somewhere to put that water. Their, their houses are sinking, and they need to dump their water somewhere, and we're, we're using your land. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor C2. Yeah, real quick, let's just wrap this up. The easiest way to get any resolution out of this is to refer to the Committee on Real Estate, have JR come to the table with these people, with the councilors on the committee, and talk about how we're going to resolve it, and not hear, you know, JR says one thing today, something different tomorrow. We can be here all night. They can show us the plans. Nothing's going to get resolved like this. I'm glad you brought it to our attention, but the, I make a motion for the Committee on Real Estate, have everybody come to the table, Let's find out what's going on. Let's find out how to correct it and give these people what they deserve. A land to build a lot like they had in 2004. That's my motion. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you. Motion made by Councilor Kamara, seconded by Councilor Long. Uh, discussion, Councilor in seat seven. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing we have department heads and they make comments like, uh, we're going to dump on your property, we're going to put pipes to it. They, the house up the street from you, they put a, I guess, a sewer line through your property That's as correct. Well. That's correct. And I was down here today, and I remember that, that piece of a gully there and whatever pipes they put to alleviate the problem. But uh, you had told me they dug your lot to fill the other lots up yes. on both sides, leaving uh, a void, and the water accumulates on your property. That's correct. Which is certainly not right. I talked to Mr. Duff today, and he says he didn't do anything to disturb anything mm -hmm. to make the water go towards your property. And, you know, I said, well, I mean, uh, can we fill that? And, you know, you had a couple of excuses, whatever the case may be. But I think JR uh, is not doing anything to solve the problem that you have. But uh, for him to say you can cross your property to put the sewer line is not right. But he also tells me you got 10 feet there that the city owns. They could do that. So I don't know if they really cross your property or not. But it's some answers that we're going to get. And to send it to the real estate committee, I have no problem with that. I do have a problem with some of the things that they have done up there. And I think they cause you a big injustice. You got that property. What is the last variance that you had? 
Was that 216? The, the last variance, it was, um, no, no, uh, the 2016 was the variance for the, my neighbor. They permit, the city permitting them to use my lot to remove his, their water. And th that's how they're going to give him the permits to build. But my last variance was in 2006. Now, 206. I've been going to the city, and they keep telling me, no, 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 they're going to take James Duff to court. I just need to wait. This is a long process. You just need to wait. Be patient. Pay your taxes and wait. Well, I think the time has arrived. The Senate next year, the Real Estate Committee, to bring JR down to try to get some answers off Duff. You know, if he caused a problem, he, he builds houses. And uh, if he's got a problem, uh, let him rectify the situation and let JR come up with the right answers. Not that his hands are tied. What does that mean? His hands are tied. What does that mean? I wouldn't even say that, but he said it. Well, I want to know what, what he means by that. Did he get something from upstairs, downstairs? Hey, do what you have to do. No permits for you. That's it. I don't know. That's what I want to know. So uh, with the new regime coming next year, we send it to the committee. If I'm still on the real estate committee, I'll hear it, and I'm sure uh, if uh, Mr. Ponte is the president, that he'll take swift action and uh, make sure that we know what's going on. It's anything underhanded, we'll find out. And it seems to be the theory in Fall River. Everything seems to be shady and underhanded. And I don't like that. I don't think any of my colleagues like that or the people of Fall River. We're going to do the right thing for the right people. And if there's an injustice done to you, we ought to correct it. With that, I yield. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor in seat one. Thank you, Madam President. First of all, thank you for going down there. I know you and I have had multiple conversations about all the properties down there uh, and what's really transpiring and the fact that these houses are on slabs because uh, of the water table and, and things of that nature. However, <clears throat> um, I'm not in a disagreement with Mr. Fry. I, I think his hands are tied. That's the reality of the situation. I've been saying this time and time again. This process is broken, all right? I think it's about time that we get the state representatives to the table, um, that we get the planning board to the table, because the only way this is going to get rectified so that we don't have any more individuals before us when we start talking about subdivision is to actually change the subdivision's rules and regulations at the state level, okay? The problem that we have is we have, sub, uh, we have contractors coming in, purchasing properties, subdividing these properties, getting the approvals at the planning board with site plan review saying, yes, everything is okay. We are not going out for third-party review to make sure drainage is, is done properly, everything is adequate. Um, in terms of surety, there are three types of surety. We can have a cash payment for a surety, we can have a bond, or we can have a parcel of land. And at the, the municipalities have no control or say on what type of surety is given to the by these uh, developers. So the first thing they do is give us a parcel of land, a piece of land that they're not gonna develop, okay? Then when they don't put the right roads in or finish the binder costs, they file bankruptcy. They open up as another LLC. They go on to their next subdivision, okay? Meanwhile, we've got a piece of land that even if we go out to bid, just say it is worth that $90,000. If we need to make the infrastructure improvements as they're requesting, we're doing it at prevailing wage, which is at least 10 times to 20 times higher than what a general contract is gonna do. I've been saying this, I've been kicking and screaming about this, this is just not a, an issue in the city of Fall River. This is throughout the Commonwealth. And I think if we're going to refer this to the Real Estate Committee, we need to get the state delegation down here so that they can understand exactly what's transpiring, what the issues are. We need to get uh, the planning department, the engineering department down here to have these conversations so that we know how to articulate it to the delegation so that they can go and make these uh, changes at the state level. Because until we do that, we're going to constantly have individuals that are coming before us saying that they need action taken. And the only real action that there is, is civil action. So they have to go to court. So our hands are tied. So if we're gonna do what we're supposed to be doing, then we need to start, and it needs to start with the state. And we need to start advocating and saying that we're not gonna tolerate this stuff anymore. But we continue to turn a blind eye. We're not addressing the issues, and I think that's what we need to do. Now, unfortunately, we've got an individual who has property, purchased the property since 2004 or 14, Four. whatever it was, Four. and now we've got major issues. There needs to be a correction. Now, it, it's up to us to figure out how we're gonna correct it. I can tell you that it's gonna take forever to even unload this, this parcel of land. 
because if he hasn't gotten a approval on his entire development, the road probably hasn't even been accepted if it's in the subdivision, okay? And I've said this at the, about two meetings ago. We've got subdivisions. You go down Detroit Street. There's a subdivision that was put in by a different contractor that was done in 2000. It still has the binder course on it because it's never been accepted. And then the city is required, and we're technically not supposed to be paving these roads, but we continue to, to provide the services to the residents who are paying taxes, and we are not holding any of the contractors accountable. And quite frankly, we have no leverage to do that. So if we're going to really address this, then we need to get everybody at the table and hold everybody accountable. With that, I yield. Thank you. <clears throat> we have a motion to send this to the committee on real estate made by Councilor Camara, seconded by Councilor Long. Oh. More discussion, Councilor? Oh, sir. Oh, sir. All in favor? Aye. So voted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Stachio, would you give those, can the clerk make copies of those? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Hetzler and Ms. Sullivan, are you all set? You're on the citizen's input. Okay, thank you. Madam Clerk? The first item before you are transfers and appropriations. The first is that the sum of $440,000 be in the same as hereby appropriated from the Water Enterprise Fund free cash to the Water Enterprise Fund FY20 budget. Second. Motion to adopt made by Councilor Camara, seconded by Councilor Kilby. Any discussion? Councilor C1? Do we know what the reason for the transfer is? I didn't see. Mr. Hardy? Thank you, Council President, members of the Council. Um, these transfers that are both in front of you, the Water Department transfer as well as the Sewer Department transfer, they were part of the original budget and they were in um, the budget documents. When the appropriation order was um, submitted to you, the revenue aspect of the appropriation did not include the free cash and we just want to tidy, tidy it up. So for housekeeping purposes, DOI will have the actual vote. Gotcha. Do you yield, yes. Councilor? Anything further? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. And the second order, that the sum of $1,225,000 be in the same as hereby appropriated from the Sewer Enterprise Fund, free cash to the Sewer Enterprise Fund, FY20. Second. Motion adopted, made by Councilor Joseph Kamara, seconded by Councilor Kadeem. Any discussion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. Thank you. Item number three is the establishment of the FY 2020 tax factor and levy. We, just have that paper. Um, we do have a communication from the Board of Assessors, but we do not have a formal recommendation by the Board. Motion to set the uh, tax factor um, with the tax shift of 1.71 which is a tax factor of 0 0.8072, if I'm reading that correctly. Motion made by Councilor Kadeem, seconded by Councilor Joseph Kamara. Discussion? Councilor in seat two? I'm sorry, Councilor in seat three. Councilor Stephen Kamara. Well, I'd like to hear from the assessors as to what their recommendation is. Uh, it's very uncommon. I don't ever recall the assessors not making a recommendation. And uh, while I appreciate the uh, perspective of Mr. O'Sullivan and Mr. Hetzler, uh, there needs to be some advocacy on the part of the residential taxpayers as well, because the residential taxpayers are uh, facing uh, difficulty in maintaining their homes. Uh, the rent increases that uh, people are facing it is uh, something that is significant. Uh, there is a housing crisis in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And uh, that is being reflected on uh, people not being able to hold on to their homes because of the increased cost. So uh, last year, the, um, the uh, tax factor was, I believe, set at 1.72, which is what it That's is correct. at currently. Uh, and I would like to hear justification uh, from the assessors to either uh, 
support that or move from it in one direction or another. So that's my request is that we hear from the assessors before acting on any vote. Okay. Do you yield, Council? I yield. Thank you. Yes, uh, we met this afternoon. We had a meeting this afternoon, the Board of Assessors, and we agreed upon 171 as the factor. Um, what we did was we looked at the um, values and the rates, and um, previously you heard from the commercial people that um, their tax rates uh, are relatively high in comparison. At the 171, that rate would have, would have come to a thirty dollars and sixty three cent per thousand. Now I have some information um, on last year's average rates for the gateway cities. The gateway city, Fall River was thirty one thirty six, the Bedford was thirty four eighty four, Totten was thirty four twenty four, Brockton thirty one sixty seven. So at the thirty eighty six it's gonna put us in in a, a, a very competitive standpoint that we're below where we rank the lowest out of the gateway cities and that was our reason for accepting the thirty dollars and eighty six cents per thousand Councilor C4 and also we're moving slightly in a direction um, that was articulated by our business people correct correct um, and where is our assessor our administrative assessor he's not here um, he wasn't available this evening. He wasn't. Okay. I yield. Thank you. Councilor, you did, there is a letter in the packet from him. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor, seat seven. Well, that was my question. Uh, where's Ben tonight? Uh, and I'm to understand, correct me if I'm wrong, that he's out on administrative with pay. And if that's the, if that's the deal, that's bad. If it's right, it's bad. Do we know if he's out with pay? I don't know. We do, Councillor. He he is um, out as we currently speak on administrative leave. With pay? I believe so. I may, don't know whether I, he's yeah, using no, vacation respect, time I, or not. I'm sorry, may I? In all due respect, I, I would like to, for you to give me that answer. I mean, you said he's unavailable because he's out. Well, we really uh, need. Forgive me, Mary, but uh, I, I'd, I'd like to know. I, I understand that. It's really a personnel issue. Um, and he's he's out at the moment. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. You know, here we go. We got the the mayor that's out, and he's getting paid some twenty five thousand. We got Kathy that's out, and I guess we bought her out. Did we buy her out? We did, Councillor. And there's money there. And here we go. We got the assessor, and he's not here tonight. And well, he's not here. He's not available. We don't tell us that he's not available, and he's not working yet. He's getting paid. You gotta be kidding me. So how much more of this does the, the city gotta see? This is crazy stuff. If he's out, he's out for a reason. Terminate him or do what you have to do. How long are you gonna pay him before uh, uh, things get in the right perspective? So, it, 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 you know, it just angers me that that's going on here in the city for River. With that, I yield. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor in seat one. Uh, thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> so, so first of all, we won't go into personnel issues. I would just uh, caution my colleagues that obviously personnel matters are exactly. are just that personnel. And I, I think before we make comments about personnel matters, it's it's important to number one know that there's more to a story than what we know. And I, I think we've got to allow the individuals who are in positions to manage personnel handle it. Um, and unfortunately, if somebody's going out on paid administrative leave, there is a process for that. So that but that's neither here nor there. But when we start talking about uh, the tax factor, and I understand. The easy comparison for tax factors are really the tax rate, but um, a major portion of uh, this whole process, and, and I think especially for businesses, is, is valuations, right, and, and assessed property value uh, from other communities. So do you have, and, and I know the tax rate is readily available, but where are we in terms of um, similar property? I know our average commercial property, I think for FY20, um, is $638,130. Our average value single family is 232,910. Do we, do we know what other communities, uh, other gateway city communities are, are looking at? I have that information, Councilor. Uh, let me just say this, uh, to provide information to the council, uh, I had to use 2019 rates because these communities have not set their mm -hmm. tax rate yet. 
So when I look at the uh, residential side, you know, Fall River likes to be compared to New Bedford all the time. New Bedford probably compares to Fall River. Uh, but one of the things that I'd like to mention is if I look at, let's take the residential rate first. If I look at the residential rate in Fall River, it's 14 last year's, it's $14.58. If I look at New Bedford, it's $16.47. If I go to the commercial side, the commercial rate in Fall River is $31.36. On the New Bedford side, it's $34.84. But here is the issue. Um, we, we're looking at this year, there was a uh, slight uptick uh, in our values, and our average values. I have last year's values. Our average value in Fall River was pretty comparable to New Bedford. It was 225, 292. Last year in New Bedford was 227, 186. So we're within $2,000 of each other. Uh, but the key is when we measure tax bills, the average single family house in New Bedford is paying 3742. In Fall River, it's 3285. So that's like a $500 swing. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think as, as a resident of Fall River, um, can we say that we have the better end of it? Yeah, but there is a little misleading, and I'd like to mention that. The misleading is New Bedford levies more than we do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's going to have the uptick in terms of a tax bill. But we have a better deal. And, and what I'd like to also say in relationship to the uh, values that we deal with, let's take a look at Taunton, which is close by. 15 minutes up the road, we're in Taunton. Their average single family tax bill in Taunton is $4,153 in comparison to our 32. So it's almost $1,000. They may, the values are going to be higher because as you start getting closer to Boston, the values are starting to get up there. But we've noticed a tremendous uptick this year in our values, when the values were certified, the residential values have gone up 6%. That's the two families, and I have that information here, the two families have gone up 4 to, to 5%. The condominiums have gone up 6%. The commercial, when I look at the commercial, commercials have gone up 1.3. Now normally, what you're seeing in commercials is either going to be flat or there's going to be a slight decrease. And the reason for that is commercials are done on the income approach. It's, it's rents. So when, you, when you're involved with long-term leases, you don't have the ability to renegotiate that for a period of years. So your leases pretty much stay the same. At the end result, cap rates go up, values go down. And that's basically what's happened. But I see that that's a good sign. And the other part of it that I see that the people in Fall River are willing to take an investment risk, not only on single families and twos, but on the multifamilies as well, and on the three families. That's a range between 9 and 17 percent, based on sales and assessment from last year. So when I see these numbers in front of me, I'm saying that the people in Fall River are now believing in us, no matter what what's going on, they're starting to believe in it in terms of risk. And as we all know, your biggest investment in our lifetime is a house. And, and they're willing to risk that investment to come into the, the city of Fall River. So that, I, that, that I'm looking at from the LA4 comparison based on last year's numbers to this year's numbers certified as we speak. Thank you. Okay. Um, and, I, and I appreciate that. So. Which is why I, I made the recommendation for the 1.71, because I, I think when we start having these conversations, I think it becomes more of a philosophical approach in terms of where we want to see the shift. I personally um, want to try to minimize the burden on those people that have fixed income, but also recognize that we have to have a balance uh, with the commercial industry, uh, especially given the fact that we have a lot of small businesses, um, you know, family started businesses, uh, and, and one of we, we were here about two months ago uh, with Mero when we just gave Mero a tax break, on, and not a TIF, but we basically looked at their uh, taxes that they were, the valuation that we're doing, and they, we gave them a break on five years of taxes that they were paying. And, and at that point, I made an argument that we have 
small mom and pop places that are corner stores that are uh, it's their livelihood right and uh, a fifty dollar increase in taxes could make or break them because the only employees that they have are themselves they're working 24 hours working seven days a week trying to make make ends meet and we're doing absolutely nothing for them um, and meanwhile we're we're giving larger corporations breaks on their taxes be, taxes because they're going to be adding some additional jobs and value to, to the city I think we need just need to be focused on this and I think the 1.71 in my mind um, has that that balance where we don't have a significant increase on the residential uh, but we also have uh, a moderate increase on commercial which has been sharing the burden uh, and Mr. Hetzler has has really articulated with it's not just this when we start looking at the CSO charges Mm -hmm. uh, we have a fixed rate, which is which is good. And I say we, meaning the residential. When you start looking at commercial, it is an absorbent amount of money uh, that they are paying for this CSO project. Um, so I think it's only fair and equitable that we, we look at that. Um, I, I think the city council really needs to uh, take a stand with the administration as to where do we want to see this tax rate uh, stay. And we're never going to get to a single tax rate. That's That's just not going to happen. I don't see us getting back to the 175, but we need to figure out where we need to be and then monitor every single year what that tax implication is, whether it's 168 to 171 and, and be within that, that range so that we can be flexible and working with bo both the business and the residents. So, you know, moving forward, I, I hope that this council can, can sit down with the administration and, and the business community and residents and, and start having those conversations so that we have at least a plan going forward. Uh, with that, I'm going to be supporting this, and I yield. Yield. Councilman C6, Council Long. How about growth? What do we have for growth? I got that, yeah. I think two it's million. shortly, a little bit over two million. Two million total? Yes. You have it broken down by commercial versus yeah, I residential? Yeah, Okay, the uh, new growth, uh, the total of new growth was 2140488 the total residential was 739668 the um, commercial uh, was 111,000 I'm sorry 112858 the industrial was 280,901 the personal property was 1,007,061 total and 2,140488 was that percentage wise overall it's probably better than a two and a half, maybe two, two point seven. I don't have that in front of me. No, that's that's good though. I just, yeah. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's relative. You know what I mean? We just, we have been fortunate in not only the city of Fall River, but the the issue of personal property everywhere in the Commonwealth. Personal property is bringing in a lot of money, and one of the key drivers of that is the utility companies. All this construction that you see out there when they're putting in wires and poles and at the end of the day, it's all new. It's all new. We all make money on it. Are you? From the, sorry. Anything further from the council? A motion to establish the fiscal 2020 tax factor and levy at 1.71, made by Councilor Kadim, seconded by Councilor Kilby. Madam Clerk, do we need a roll call? Yes. Councilors Kadim? Yes. Joseph Kamara? Stephen Kamara? No. Kilby? Yes. Long? Yes. Pelletier? Yes. Vaveris? Yes. Vice President Lalabi Lebeau? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Motion, Motion to, to adjourn? adjourn? We have one more. Um, oh, the resolution. Thank you. Um, we actually need to um, vote on the tax levy um, for the classes of real property. We would have residential at 63.4790, open space at zero, commercial 20.5175, and industri industrial 10.1983, and personal property 58.052. Motion to adopt the levy. Second. Motion to adopt, made by Councilor Kilby, seconded by Councilor Long. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you need a roll call, Madam Clerk? Yes. 
Councillors Kadim? Yes. Joseph Kamara? Stephen Kamara? No. Kilby? Yes. Long? Yes. Pelletier? Yes. Glaveris? Yes. And Vice President La Liberty Bow? Yes. And the final matter is the resolution um, that was created during citizen input. Would you like me to read the resolution? Yes, please. Be it resolved that the Committee on Real Estate meet to discuss the flooding and building issues on Whitefield Street with all involved parties, including city officials, members of the state delegation, residents, and contractors. Without Motion no adopted by Councillor Kilby, seconded by Councillor Pelletier. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. That's all we have. Motion, Motion adjourned. adjourned. Made by Councillor Kadim, seconded by Councillor Stephen Kamara. All in favor? Aye.